It's always a high honor to stand in this pulpit under the direction of Brother Copeland and Sister Gloria of all these years that we've been preaching together and things of that nature. It's just really amazing to me that when God puts covenant together, he says, Psalms 89, 34 is one of my favorite verses. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that goes out of my lips. So if you can get God to say something, he won't turn his back. He, he's got to do what he says. Yes. And I remember years ago when I started preaching in 1976, I, I keep all my Bible. I got tons of Bible. They all wore out. I, I, write this down if you like. If, you, if your Bible's torn apart, your life is not. Yes. You ought to write that down. That'll help you. Praise God. You know, I, he, God gave me that probably 40 years ago, whatever, maybe longer than that. And, uh, and I thought, I'd just tear up these Bibles, i keep them. And I wrote, and I, I looked at my first Bible that I preached with all those years ago, and, and I wrote into, right around right on, on the side of it, I want my word to be like God's word. Yes. That when I say something, I do what I say. Yes. And, uh, and I have held that, I've kept that. I mean, when I tell you something, you could ask my daughter, Jody, my daddy tell you to do something, you take it to the bank, he's gonna do what he says. And if I couldn't, if something crazy would happen, you wouldn't have to chase me. I'd go talk to you. I'd say, excuse me, you know what I'm saying? You know, some things have changed, but I'm still going to do what I, I said I was going to do. And God is so good. The reason for it, I'm saying all this, is uh, because what should, we, what, what should the world see when they look at us? And we've been talking about that. So if you've got your Bibles, would you go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5? I'm going to do a little run over what we uh, talked about yesterday, then I'll go into part 2 or part 2. Our contribution to the world, what the world sees in us. Uh -huh. And uh, it's vitally important. And I've said this so many times and I mean it, the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Yes. Think about that for a minute. I'm not talking about religion. I don't care much for religion at all. It's a theological wilderness. It's a garden of weeds. It brings a lot of controversy. It certainly doesn't bring unity. Right. I mean, look at so many different Christian denominations can't get together. Well, what are you gonna do when they get to heaven? Well, maybe they're not going. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. <laughs> that woke you up, didn't it? <laughs> Gee, <laughs> you know, hallelujah. I want to start reading Matthew chapter 5. And uh, I like the old King James Version Bible. I want to start at the uh, uh, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up to a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and he used the word blessed, and that's the Beatitudes which is wonderful. You could preach 12 sermons just on, you take each one and go with it, you know. And you could actually do a series on each one. So you could, you could do almost a whole year just on the Beatitudes. Then you get to the similitudes in verse 13, he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. I told you yesterday, there are a lot of people salted but they're not salt. See, they salt it. They love the Lord with all their heart. They go, you know, they love the Lord. They go to church every Sunday, but that's about it. Right. Then you got those barely salted. They go to church on Easter and Christmas. <laughs> but at least they do that. That's a little salt. Yeah. Then you got salt that, in other words, people will see the flavor of what Christ is inside of you. That's good. See, salted and salt. Now, you'd be surprised how many people, like, how many preachers are salted, but not salt. Yeah. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were salted, yeah. but they were not salt. Yeah. They were homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological. I said that yesterday. And they could argue with you on the law, but they didn't have a, what I call a responsible spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You see, uh, that you flow out of your spirit. Your spirit has a voice, your soul has a voice, and your body has a voice. Just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Each has different voices, yet they're one. You can tell the difference very easily if you, if you know God or you have conversation with Him. So yesterday, I'm, you can go over your notes when I say this, I told you, he said, oh, well, let me finish reading here. Uh, uh, let me read verse 13 again. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith it shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. He says, you are the light of the world. Well, sometimes you don't feel like light, but that makes no difference. <laughs> you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. In other words, people say, why do you smile so much? Got light in me. I'm very aware of people when I'm, I'm, when I'm in public. Very, very aware. You've, very few people can sneak up on me. 
you know, maybe it's because I know the Lord or it might be my past. You know, you got to do <laughs> no, nothing. When I sit down and arrest it, uh, my back's against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it is. In fact, Kathy, I said that the other day. I was eating with somebody and I said, they had taken it. I said, excuse me, you mind if I use that chair? Have you been saved all your life? Oh, yes. I have not. Let me have that chair. <laughs> you, know, you laugh, but hey, that's the way it is. Okay. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth, and, 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 and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now here's what I want to get to is verse 16. He says, let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So our job is to not only do good works, but to glorify God, which is in heaven. God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Ghost. I told you yesterday that light shines because its nature is to shine. You may have wrote that down. I told you a changed life must become in turn a life changer. In other words, if people get around you, I'm not afraid to get in, get around people that are sinning heavily because greater is he was in me than he was in the world. So I don't care what they're doing. Like I said so many times, I've had many opportunities to fail. I just don't take any. And I mean, I, you know, I'm 75 years old and you know, I still get hit on. Can you believe it? I just, I just can't get over that. I think, I think that girl is stupid. And she don't want me, she want my money. I don't have no money. Kathy got my money. And she gives me a little bit every once in a while. Praise God. I think of how silly. And I tell the devil, that's all you got? That's all you got? And I just laugh at that. People say, you have any weaknesses? Well, uh, uh, there's, <laughs> so I'll tell you the truth. Uh, I, I've always had a temper. I'm not big enough to whip nobody, but I learned a gun will do wonderful things for you. <laughs> if you're not afraid to shoot it, then you got to get rid of the evidence. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> you know? And uh, so every time, there's been times I've lost my temper since I've been saved. And I mean, I mean, I really went to the Lord. Lord, I've lost my temper. God, forgive me. He said, it looked like to me you found it. <laughs> I said, yeah, no, that's true. So I told you a changed life must become in turn a life changer. So people around you, you have that ability to change them. Then I said, when truth becomes a conviction, it produces action. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil can't kill you. You have to understand he's not a truth or some truth. He is the truth. Then I said, light is spread from person to person in order to kindle the light of the gospel. See, light is infectious. It's like a virus, but a good one. I've had people say, I get around you, you make me smile. I said, why? Well, it's not because I'm funny. Really, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not a funny man. This only happens when I get in this pulpit. I'm serious. I mean, when I first preached to God, my first message, people were falling out the pews. I was so mad I could spit. I was. Remember that, Kathy? I told Kathy, I said, what's the matter with crazy people? She said, Jesse, you're funny. I said, well, but this ain't funny. This is serious business. <laughs> but I never had it. People said, would you mind coming to a Valentine banquet? Say something funny. I can't do that. People say, you could be a good comedian. No, I, I don't have a monologue. <laughs> no, but when, for some reason or another, because I was such a, um, most people don't believe this, a terrible person before I was born again that God gave me some joy and he gave me that. And it's just a blessing of the Lord. I'm surprised at myself. <laughs> Sometimes I said, I can't believe I'm that funny. <laughs> I, I, you know, he said, you're not. <laughs> God said, I am through you. And I thought, you know, that makes total sense. You see what I'm saying? So, see, light is spread from person to person in order to kindle the light of the gospel. Then I tell you, it is by union that Jesus, that we partake of his illumination. We have to illuminate. Because, see, people notice light. And it's amazing to me. Like, you see, if everybody look up and go past the TV light, look at all that darkness trying to get down here. It's trying, doing everything it can to get down here. But it can't. 
And yet, look how much more darkness. It's, don't look at me, look up. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what Kenneth Copeland said. Do what I tell you, woman. Do what I tell you, man. <laughs> you know? Look, look how, much, look how much is it? Look how much, that's a lot. Look at the amount of lights that's just holding it. Isn't that amazing? So let me make this announcement. If the lights go out, my hair is so white, it glows in the dark. <laughs> Just follow me. <laughs> I also told you a point that I want to get to real quickly, um, and I believe that you enjoyed. Uh, no, that's not it here. Hang on just a second. Let me do what Kenneth and Gloria says. Let me see what I got to do here. Yeah. That the best anyone can do is to let God have control over oneself. I always do good things when I let God control me, spiritually, physically, and financially. You see, and, and I told you that, and it's such a blessing, and I want to deal with this today. I want to go to this, write this down. This is, we'll start the new thing. Light is the only force that overcomes darkness. Light is the only force that overcomes darkness. Write this down. No person has surrendered himself to God can conform to the world. I took you yesterday to Romans 12, verse 2, be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, no person who has, has surrendered himself to God can conform to the world, no matter what happens in life. See, that's that light that overcomes darkness. Let me give you a prime example. I've wrote a lot of books. I've got a lot of best-selling books. I've done very well in book sales and tapes and uh, DVDs and uh, what do you call them? Cassette tapes and remember eight-track tapes? I, I sold a bunch of those too, praise the Lord. And, uh, and uh, I, I even still have an eight-track tape player. I have a 1978 Mark 7 car that Rodney Hart Brown gave me. Thank you, Rodney. I appreciate that. Blue makes me feel young, you know. And it's got an eight-track tape player in it. And I just stick the eight-track tape in there and I just enjoy it. I tell Kathy, come on, let's go, come on. She said, well, I'm trying to get in the front seat. I said, no, it's the back seat where we need to go, mama. <laughs> Look at it, she said, I'm gonna kill that man. We, we were not saved. We, what are y'all laughing at? You did the same thing. You just ain't got the guts to say it. Reason why I can say it because that man died. And if I keep talking like it, this man's going to die again. You see what I'm saying? You know, and uh, when you understand this, oh, let me get into this message here. I'm messing myself up. Light is the only force that overcomes darkness. So now write this down. What does light do? Light meets violence with gentleness. It meets falsehood with truth. It meets hate with love. It meets evil with good. Let me say it again. Light meets violence with gentleness. Light meets falsehood with truth. Light meets hate with love. And light means evil with good. Now, I'll go back over that in just a minute. Now, I've wrote a lot of books, like I told you, and I've done very well selling books. And uh, I signed a book. Uh, I, what's the name of the people? Uh, Simon & Schuster uh, published one of my books, The Everyday Visionary, many, many years ago. And it's, it's really a huge publishing house there in New York. And gave me a ton of money up front, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then, it, I mean, a ton of money, a chunk, you know, that kind of stuff. And they asked me, they found out that I was going to uh, that, uh, the West Coast Believers Convention. What's the name of that town, Longview? Longview, Texas. Longview, California. Is it Longview? Yeah, y'all know. <laughs> I'm thinking Texas here, yeah, I'm thinking California, yeah. Uh, yes. I got it the first time I did. <laughs> So they asked me if I would do a go on the radio and um, talk about the book. It's one of the biggest radio stations there. What they failed to tell me was that is that one of the biggest homosexual communities in California, Long Beach. Long Beach. I got it. 
So I don't know. Uh, Satan's setting me up, see. I'm just saying we're going to talk about the book. So I walk into the studio and everything, you know, it's real, very, very friendly, very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, just like I said, we have with us here uh, Reverend Dr. Jesse DePlantis, who is preaching with uh, Reverend Kenneth Copeland here at the West Coast Believers Convention in Long Beach. And, uh, uh, and I thought, oh, this is nice. I said, thanks for the plug, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then he looks at me and he says, how come you hate homosexuals? Now, now it's more than night, but not, not last night. <laughs> See, that's two questions they're going to hit you if you got any notoriety in ministry. What do you believe about homosexuals, about homosexuals, and how much money you make? Yes. Them two, they death want to know. And I looked, I said, I thought we were talking about the book. I said, but evidently you won't talk about something. I heard you hate homosexuals. I said, you heard wrong. I don't hate you. Are you a homosexual? Yes. I said, I don't hate you. Do you hate me? <laughs> you see how light turns the question around to them. And he looked at me, yeah, you hate him. I said, no, no, I don't. He said, well, I, that's the way I was born. I said, no, I disagree. You weren't born a homosexual. Now I will grant you this, sir. You, you may not know when you became a homosexual. That's possible. You may not know how you became a homosexual. That's possible. But you weren't born a homosexual because God created you to create. You see, now he just looked at me and he said, well, I want to, I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, let me help you here. If you were hungry, I would feed you. I'd go to lunch with you. I, I, I don't care if people see me go to lunch with a homosexual. You think I care what people think about? I wouldn't be in the ministry 48 years. I'd be dead. Uh-uh. You know, I care about what God says. I said, and I said, I, and I gave him a compliment. I said, I'm going to tell you some of the most talented people I've ever seen in my life are homosexuals. I never forget one time, we, remember we wanted to put them silk flower plants in our first office? So we went to a, what do you call that? A, a, you know, a place where you get that stuff, uh, flowers. What do you call that? Yeah, you know. And uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep the conversation going here. Long Beach. Got it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know where I'm at. No? <laughs> so watch this. I walk in and there's two guys. He said, can we help you? I said, yeah, I, I want to do this. They go, oh, oh, this, we, we can just do this. And I went, okay, we can just do this. Them guys were talented. I mean, I mean, talented. I said, I don't doubt that you're a very talented man. I said, I, I said, God don't hate you and neither do I. I said, I, just, I said, what I want to do is I'm the only one in this television station, tell, uh, uh, radio station telling you the truth. I said, mister, I want to go to heaven. He said, I don't believe in God. I said, that don't change it. Like as if you don't believe it's still the truth. I said, but I'm telling you. Don't let some sexual connotation destroy eternity for you. Yes. I don't believe that. That don't change it. Right. You don't believe you got cancer, but cancer will kill you if you got it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it can't kill you at the first stage. Yeah. Yeah. It can't do that. It has to develop to fourth stage and on. It can't do it at the first. So it's not as powerful as you think it is. That's why you say if you catch it early, it's done with it. I began, I began, I just began to talk to him and tears began to come. Out. I said, man, I want you to go to heaven. Listen, I have nothing against you. See, this was light meeting darkness. Instead of trying to just, you know, nail him to the wall and all that kind of stuff. And finally, I mean, he, he started crying. And, and I mean, this whole place is full of homosexuals. They're going, oh, I just love that man. <laughs> That's what they said. And I went, I love y'all too. <laughs> and it was, because not, not, I don't hate anybody. I hate the devil. But I don't hate people. See, that's like meeting evil and turning it to good. It shook him up. I said, let Jesus be the Lord of your life. I said, let me help you. Getting saved is very easy. Getting rid of all that stuff is a little hard. Because you have to learn. You have to do it. To learn. See, uh, some people have to learn to give. I never had to learn to give. I was raised so poor. I mean, and I wasn't ashamed of that. Mama didn't, mom and dad did the best they could. But I was always a generous person yeah. all my life. So, and then when they, Kathy told me about the tithe, see, she, she had read the Bible. I, and, you know, she said, it was so funny. I, I never forget it was, the, it was that pastor 
what was his name? Brother Sidney Rafer. He said, it's time to receive the morning tithe and offering. I thought he said tires. Because <laughs> I saw a bus. I saw a bus when we drove up there. I said, well, I said Kathy, the church needs some tires for the bus. Tires? <laughs> We're not an ace. <laughs> no, tithe, tithe, what's that? Well, you give 10% of the income. I said this, is that in the Bible? She said, yes, she turned over to Malachi. And I was raised with a bunch of Sicilians. I thought it was Malachi. <laughs> Will a man rob God? Not in my neighborhood. But boom, you pop that. <laughs> Don't work there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, not in my neighborhood, son. And she said, you give 10% of the income. I looked at her and I said, well, let's do that all our lives. And we've done it ever since. Now, some people don't believe in tithing. You're wrong. Look at me. You're wrong. And it's not about money. Are you Moses' seed? No, you're not. Moses is the lawgiver. Don't tell me it's under the law. You know, I mean, we can get into all that. You want to go to Hebrews 7, get into the New Testament, you can find that. That Jesus is a high priest on the order of Melchizedek. I don't have to get into that. You already know that. You're not Moses' seed. So it has nothing to do with the law. You are Abraham's seed. And heirs, according to the promise. So light meets violence with gentleness. Light meets falsehood with truth. Light meets hate. Light means hate with love, and light meets evil with good. Now write this down. The light in you will do battle because it's designed to show its might. That's why God said, greater is he was in you than he was in the world. When you understand that, you see, and I realize that I carry this light with me, even sometimes when I'm not too churchy. Don't look at me weird. Sometimes you're not too churchy. Have you ever been arguing with your wife like a crazy person getting a church and then you walk in holy? <laughs> we all do these things. It's called being human. You understand what I'm saying? That's common sense. So when you understand what God is saying about this light, and let me say that point again, the light in you will do battle because it's designed to show its might. So when I'm in a situation that I don't know what to do, I say, light, speak. God said, light be. And we are created, Ephesians 5 verse 1, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. We need to imitate God. People say, you can't do that. Yes, we can. See, there's always somebody telling you what you can't do, and God said, you can do all things. So why do you spend time listening to that foolishness? You see, and a lot of people do. You see, so the world has to see the light in us. That doesn't mean we wimps. All this junk can happen over there at the the 2024 Paris Olympics. Don't tell me they know that wouldn't be offensive to Christians. But let me tell you, drag queens. Look at me. Why don't you do that about Mohammed? Go ahead, give it your best shot. You won't last a day. They will kill you. If you draw an image of Muhammad, they will kill you. Thank God we turned the other cheek. You better thank God we believe in light. Because they don't care, son. You see what I'm saying? So, if you don't understand Christianity, then then leave it alone. You see what I'm saying? Christianity will do its thing. And God will touch anybody that will allow them to be touched through God's word. So when you understand that, let me say that again so you you get this. Here, let me read that, that, that verse, I mean that point. The light in you will do battle because it's designed to show its might. You see, the human will, write this down, the human will must be harmonized, not crushed, transformed, not trampled on. Be, ye, be, be, conformed to, be not conformed to this world, be, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look, at, Listen to me. The human will must be harmonized and not crushed. I think sometimes that the church tries to crush your, your will. But you you, got to live in God's will. But God's will and your will will harmonize. 
Let me say it again. The human will must be harmonized, not crushed, transformed, not trampled on. So I ask people, people say, well, you know, but Jesse, I don't have that revelation yet. Instead of saying, well, dumb it, stupid. I just smile. I said, well, the day will come and you will receive it. What is revelation? Reveal knowledge. You know, and, and, it's a, and people get mad at me because I, I, I don't get sad. I tried sad. I, I didn't like it. Who do you think? I ain't never seen you sick. Well, you should be shouting, you crazy idiot. I'm learning that from Trump. But anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why, why would I want to know what sickness is? I don't think you ought to have that house. Come here. I don't think I asked you. You don't like it? Close your eyes. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, you know, I'm, I've had some people say, uh, well, I'll just tell you, white people are, have criticized me more over oh, that house of mine. Good God, just envy and jealousy. Some of my good friends, they in the committee go, hey, just jealous, don't worry about it. Black people, oh God. I said, Lord, you should have made me black, Lord. <laughs> oh, make me black. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, black. black people drive by my house, they'll pull out the window. Feel to live in a house like that. I feel good. Da, 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 da. They go, whoo, you should have built it bigger. I've not had one black person criticize me. <laughs> Jesus, I, I won't be black. <laughs> they understand. They're glad that their ministers are blessed. It's amazing to me. You see, so this light in me. It's designed to do battle, and I have to battle with everything on prosperity. You know, it ain't my fault that God bless me. Thou shalt remember the Lord that God. I do that every day. For it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now, if wealth is so bad, why would He give me power to get it? Now, you know, all them years ago they were eating my lunch about uh, he got four jets. Remember that? That was all a lie stuff. I mean, I've owned four jets, but not at one time. You know, and, and I gave two of them away. They knew that. They didn't say nothing. But the one they were screaming at me about that 7X, ladies and gentlemen. I flew it here. Come on. I flew it here. Well, excuse me. I flew in it. I didn't fly it. They don't let me touch the controls. Because I'll make Baptist speaking tongues. I don't know why I fly that plane. <laughs> Boy, we were flying over the Atlantic Ocean, coming back from London with nine hours and 58 minutes, Kathy, I think, or 10 hours, you know, just sitting there. I thought, Lord, and I just tears can't swell up my eyes. I said, Jesus, you've overwhelmed me. Yeah. He said, it's just the tool. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Yeah. I got and I thank Keith Moore for believing God with me. Boy, we believe in God. And can I tell him about you? Would you mind? And then all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to Brother Keith. Step up. I think that was the word, huh? Step up. Now, both of us had 900. Now, he got a 900 EX. I have a 900. Okay. Make a long story short. He calls me up and I said, he said, man, Jesse, I'm going to believe in my 7X. I said, the plane, the money, the upgrades. And how many times I said that to you? I don't know how many times. But God kept telling me to say that. And, and he thought, whew, whew, this is a lot of money. But the Lord not broke. And you know, you may, you may look in your wallet and you, don't have no, you may not have no money in your wallet, but you got seed in the ground and a harvest is coming. But see, you got to understand where to sow at. So I used to think the Bible was called the parable of the sower. That's wrong. The parable of the seed. That's wrong. It's the parable of the soils. That's right. Some, some fell by the wayside. That's people. Now, why would somebody go to a Southwest Believers Convention and you hate Kenneth Copeland, you hate Jesse the Planet? Why? Why don't you go somewhere and have some fun? <laughs> why would you go? To give a worthless opinion. Because right. yeah. yeah. it's not going to change the thing. Right. 
Right. Well, Keith, like Keith and Phyllis, boy, we pray, we believe. So I saw something in the spirit when I got my 7X. <laughs> ABC, I got my 7X. I don't care, say what you want. You do what you got to do. I'll just fly over your stations. That's it. I said, Keith, I'm coming to Sarasota. I want you to see this. So my God, I flew into Sarasota, me and Kathy. And Keith, it was, Keith was standing out in front of his hangar. Like this way, you know, as the, uh, 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 we taxed it up by his hanger and we was turning like that. And I had a vision. God swapped us. I look and all of a sudden it's me standing out in front of my hanger and he flying up with his seven legs. I saw it. How did I see it? Light. I saw it. So when, when we got there, we come in here, all sat down. We all were talking, having a nice time. We're going to go to lunch and all that kind of stuff. And I said, Keith and Phyllis, listen. I said, I saw, you are going to do the same thing I'm doing today in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Well, bless God. <laughs> I had one of my uh, mechanics out there going like this. Here come Keith with his 780 turn. And there I am standing in front of the um, yeah. hangar. And all I could see was Keith's teeth. It was a wonderful moment. It was a, it, 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 to God be the glory. It was a wonderful moment. How could anybody criticize that? It's a wonderful moment. Come on, somebody shout. That's light. A wonderful moment. Now you really want to shout? I paid cash and he paid cash. <laughs> now even Taylor Swift got one, uh, one like us. Write this down. We are designed to be human personalities, transformed and transfigured by the power of Christ the Spirit. Let me say that again so you can get it. We're designed to be human personality. God said, let your light so shine. That's the scripture. Transformed and transfigured by the power of Christ the Spirit. You see, when you understand that, then your will is harmonized with God's will. And then all of a sudden melody flows from you. See, and that's, if you, th you think anything about music, if you know anything about music, you play piano, uh, you know, you, you got eight, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, right? But then you could do it, in, you can do it in numbers. One, three, five, yeah. one, three, harmony, five. You put them together, it becomes a chord. Yeah then you can take that card and produce music with it. Yeah. See, our life must be a concert of great music to yeah. people. I've had some people tell me, I had an atheist tell me, he said, you know, I don't believe in God, but boy, I sure wish I had what you had. <laughs> I said, it's God, man. Yeah. But see, he's thinking of God as religion. See, I thought of God as the Holy Roman Catholic Church. I never thought of God as a person because yeah. we were not allowed to talk to God. You talk to the priest. Right. You don't confess to God. Who do you think you are coming before God? You go to the priest. How many of y'all were Catholic and you went to confession? Look at that. Put your hand up. How many of you told the truth? <laughs> one. One of this whole convention. <laughs> one. I didn't tell the truth neither, lady. I lied like a dog. Why? Because I didn't have any light in me. I didn't have any light in me. See, so when you understand that the human will must be harmonized, not crushed, transformed, not trampled on. You see, to keep light, you have to be so full of light that you can't carry nothing else. Write this down. We cannot run away from what we carry with us. We cannot run away from what we carry with us. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, lay aside every weight and sin. So there's sin, then there's weights. There's sin, oh, transgressions. Do you carry that with you? Well, if you carry that with you, that's a spot of darkness that needs to be flushed out of your life. We cannot run away from what we carry with us. 
See, so I made up my mind that if I'm going to carry something, I'm going to carry the light of God because it overcomes darkness. Now, I've had to use it quite a, quite a few times, you know, when people try to hurt you. You know, I, I'll be honest, I've had more church people try to hurt me than, than, than Christian people. I mean, than, you know, than the secular world. I got some sinners that really like me. And they're really nice people. They just need Christ. They say, you know, we can hang out with you. And I said to myself, not the way you are now. You're going to change if you do. And so I get invited. Me and Kathy get invited to all kinds of wonderful things. I mean, parties and, you know, New Year's Eve. Thing. We, uh, Reverend, would you come? Now they're all drinking up a storm. People say, I wouldn't do that. I would. Why? To let my light shine. And I'd be sitting there just talking, just being nice. But you, you think I'm drinking too much? I never said nothing about the booze. I said, well, what, what do you think? He said, I guess I, I'm thinking about it. I guess I'm drinking too much. Did you have a drink before you were saved? I said, oh yeah, barrels. I first got drunk when I was six because my uncles would leave cans of beer half when I, you know, our kids going to drink something. I got loaded as a goose fell off of a, a, a boat hanging on the end, drunk as a skunk. Mama beat me sober. Now she should have beat my uncles. They're the ones left the cans of beer. But you know, a child's a child, you know. And people thought I'd never be able to stop drinking because I drank a fifth of whiskey a day. You smoke a little dope a week and snort cocaine, PCP, crystal meth, take trips and never, left, never leave your house. <laughs> Take uppers and downers. You ever done that? Woo! Uh, Woo! Uh, I mean, wow. Miracle of God, I lived. <laughs> Kathy caught me one time. We had an apartment in Arlington, Texas on Park Road, the Spanish Square Apartments. I was loaded, boy. She got up, it was about three o'clock in the morning. She found me with my head in the cupboards <laughs> because they had newspaper wallpaper, and I was reading it. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? I was going to hell. We are designed to be human personalities, transformed and transfigured by the power of God. You, you got to understand something. Personality, uh, principalities work through personalities. Yes. See, sometimes when somebody acting like a devil, it's not them. That doesn't mean they're um, possessed. You know, I, I can be a possession, don't misunderstand me. But most of the time it's not, they're just acting like a devil. You know, you know, you know, you know, sister so-and-so, the devil in your church. <laughs> you just thought of her. Yeah. Well, how come she got to be a woman? Why is it always sister so-and-so? How about brother no good? Why is it always blame the woman when it takes two to tangle? See how unfair that is. See, that's, that's, your light is starting to dim and the darkness is starting to come in. You see what I'm saying? So I'm very careful. Now, I hadn't drank booze since, oh God, uh, Labor Day weekend, 1974, I believe. People say, oh, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> You're living in a dream world. This flesh is not saved and neither is yours. It has to be crucified daily, not Sunday. You might remember, I said this many, many years ago, we were driving and I was, I had, I do a lot of, it don't look like I exercise a lot. I do, you know, I used to have a six pack. I got a keg now, but I had a six pack. <laughs> and, uh, and I did all my exercise stuff and it was on Walnut Hill Lane. This is when Chili's was real good yeah. way back when. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but this is the truth. So I stopped. I said, man, I was thirsty. So, you know, we talked. We don't say water. We say, uh, this lady, I say, can I get a glass of water? Yeah. And she just kind of looked at me and didn't know what, what it was, you know. And I uh, said, so when you come back, we'll, we'll give you what we want to eat, you know. So, so she comes back. And, you know, water is so different. Yeah. 
in any place. So when it came back, the water would have a little yellow tint to it. But I was thirsty. See, I was really, really thirsty. The worst water I've ever seen, I'm sorry, Monroe, Louisiana. It's brown. You, you fill up a bathtub, I ain't getting in there. Oh no, it's so slippery, it slips off your body. They call it soft. His past soft. <laughs> so I grabbed that glass. Whom? And normally you don't taste it until you swallow it. You put it, your mouth fills up with water. Whoa. And I went, whoo. And it was scotch and water. Actually, Cuddy Sark. Now I'm saved. Born again. I went, ho! Ho! <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it came back, boom! And I could hear the devil swallow it, swallow it. But there was one voice louder, Kathy, spit it out! Spit it out! Remember that, Kathy? You were mad. Spit it out! I went, ooh, 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 Spit it on the floor! So I grabbed this glass, I went, ho! Oh. My light had dimmed just a little. <laughs> I called a lady, I said, ma'am, this is scotch and water. That's what you said. I said, no, I said, water. Do you know that that crazy stuff talked to me for two weeks? How could it talk to a saved man? Your body's not saved. It has to be crucified. So every time they talk, I say, shut up in the name of Jesus. I crucify you. And I would do it out loud in the rest of something. I'd go, shut up in the name of Jesus. People go, oh, that was I too loud? No, no, I ain't talking to you. You see, light overcomes darkness. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you understand that, you'll understand this. Write this down so you'll understand what I'm talking about. We must be intently listening to the divine voice, which speaks from within so we can faithfully perform the divine will. Remember that your will and God's will has to harmonize? We must be intently listening to the divine voice. Why? Because we can only say what Jesus says. That's why Jesus was so pow powerful. I only say what my father says and I only do what my father says to do. We must be intently listening to the divine voice, which speaks from within, so we can faithfully perform the divine will. Prime example, last night, Kenneth Copeland. He'd be preaching, he'd just stop and say, you know, the Lord said this. Yeah. See, you can talk and listen at the same time. Yeah. Good. Now, you see, the reason why he did that is because he has a responsible spirit. Yes. That meaning when the spirit spoke, God through his spirit, he stopped what he said and he said, the Lord said this, and the Lord said that. Then it's up to you to respond to that. And how do you respond? By intently listening. And when you intently listen, the voltage comes up and your light gets brighter. Let me say it again. We must be intently listening to the divine voice, which speaks from within, so we can faithfully perform the divine will or what he says. Why? Because you, you have to be a light to the world. See what I'm saying? You have to be. There's no other choice. That's why I don't believe in secret sin or secret scandals things of that nature. No, no. Why? Because our light must constantly, because people are walking in darkness. They're blinded. The blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, and, and when you understand that, well, I said this yesterday, that if you know something about Elisha, he followed Elijah real close. And then finally, Elijah said, what you want? What you want? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. I said this yesterday. He didn't say, I want a double portion of your anointing. There's a vast difference between spirit and anointing. Spirit is who you are, Christ in you. The anointing is what God delivers to you. See, so your spirit attracts people, but your anointing keeps them. I can say that with my partnership. My God, I got a lot of partners. Oh, but my spirit attracts them. There's something about that guy. 
something, what it is, you know, you never know what he's going to say. Right. Because I'm receiving dictate from God. I don't know what I'm going to say neither. So what I do is my spirit attracts people and then my anointing keeps them. I have partners. In fact, I just had a partner. My first partner was a policeman who pulled me over to give me a ticket. <laughs> he wasn't saved. I was going to preach there in North Louisiana. I was late and he pulled me over and he's got his book out and he's writing me. He said, what do you do? And I said, I'm, I'm a preacher. You're a preacher. Yeah. I said, I got to preach tonight. Where are you going to preach at? And I told him the church, you know, and it passed it then. I think he's not going home with the Lord. It was Brother Nunley. I remember people. I, I just enjoyed Brother Nunley. And, 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 and Darlene, that was the name of the uh, town. Darlene, Louisiana. Man, that's way back when. Good Lord. He said, Darlene, that's, my wife goes to that church. I said, she does. I said, yeah. He said, in fact, she wanted me to come hear you. <laughs> I said, well, you got something to say now. I said, well, give me that ticket. I was wrong. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm arguing with the man. His name was Tommy Mac Williams. I said, no, I, I did wrong. Go ahead and give me the ticket. I, I'll pay it. That's fine. No, no, I, I don't want to do that. I said, no, do it. He said, I'm the cop. <laughs> I said, okay, but I'm going to come see you tonight because you were honest enough to tell me to give me the ticket. So I, I went. He, I mean, he went to the meeting. We had a glorious meeting. Uh, 50 people. I'm, I'm probably stretching it there. Small church, you know, but I was so glad that they had asked me. It's 1978, way back when. I gave an altar call and he came and got saved. Now watch this. He said, uh, me and my wife want to partner with you. He was my first partner. I never had a partner. I didn't, I just never thought of that. I always thought of me. I can work hard and I'll develop this and I'll generate it. But even Jesus had partners. So watch this. He gave me his first check. He never missed a month in 40, I started preaching in 76, this is 78, in 46 years. Never missed a month. And yet his giving kept going up, 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 up over all those years. So I said, Tommy, why? And when I did my first visionary conference, remember we flew Tom in Virginia? I said, I want y'all to meet my first partner. And boy, he was so proud. He saw the light. He saw the light. Well, the other day I got caught doing something I shouldn't be doing. I didn't know I was doing wrong. You know, the, uh, the uh, tracks, uh, the train was going and man, I could see my ministry. <coughs> And we have a big, huge shoulder, you know, on Armand Boulevard. So I just went on and drove toward my gate. Well, buddy, here come this cop. And they got to make more noise. I can see the lights. You know, I said, the fool just wants everybody to see me. I didn't stop. I said, you better stop. I said, I'm going in my office. So I pulled into the gate. Boy, he's right behind me. And I said, I didn't stop now. So he come out. He said, do you know what you're doing? I said, yeah. Did I do something wrong? He shouldn't be driving. That's a bicycle lane. I said, there ain't no bicycles in it. <laughs> he said, well, that was wrong to do that. He said, because if a car would have pulled out, they would have hit you. I said, you know, that's right. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not going to give you a ticket. I said, no, give me the ticket. I said, I did wrong. He, and then he starts telling me, but you didn't know you did wrong. I said, listen, sir, you told me I did wrong. Just give me the ticket. I'll pay for the ticket. You know, hey, whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. I didn't tell Kathy, but I thought about Tommy Mac Williams. Who knows? Maybe that cop may become a partner. I don't know. I don't know. He said, but he said, now you know. I said, yes, sir. Thank you. And I could see he was pleased that I was willing to take my punishment because I did wrong. You see what I'm saying? I said, I don't mind. I don't mind. Now, Kathy's not like that. <laughs> Kathy got a heavy foot. <laughs> Me, if, I, if, the, if the speed limit is 55, I do 56, pull it over. Boom. 
Kathy's doing 75 in a 55. Please <laughs> pulls her over. He said, ma'am, do you know how fast she was going? Yes. <laughs> I got things to do. Well, we're gonna have to give you a ticket. She says this, why? I pay taxes. <laughs> you pay taxes? I pay taxes. I don't think I deserve this ticket. See, her light was a little dim. <laughs> he said, well, ma'am, <laughs> you should go to jail. 55 to 75, they didn't know ticket. Well, I just, I kept, she kept telling him, I pay taxes. The cop was confused. So he says, listen, if you don't want it to go against your record, just go to the DA and tell him that. Now, I wouldn't do that, but not Kathy, buddy. The next day, she dress up, look like a million bucks. Got the Chanel number five, number 22, number 960, just smelling good. Walks into that DA, he goes, ooh, hello. She says, I pay taxes. He says, what kind of car were you driving? This is years ago. She said, I had a Lexus. Oh, you got one of them top Lexus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't want this to go on my record. Now, she's smelling so good, looking so good. He said, okay. <laughs> I've never done that. And they all criticized me. Well, it didn't go against her record. I paid this. She suggested pay this. I said, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> and yet all the police in St. Charles, they just look, that's Miss Kathy. How you know? Boom, boom. That's Miss Kathy going. <laughs> Got a heavy foot, boy. She just, she liked to drive. And I just bought her a new car, you know. I saw that. So I said, you, know, you, want, a, you want another car? Oh, no. And then she saw it. Yes. <laughs> fine. Just do, fine. Just whatever. And it's just such a blessing, and, and, you know, but to let my light shine. See, yeah. I want people to see the good works, yeah. not to glorify me, but to glorify God. Am I going too long here? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have time on this thing here. And uh, when you understand that, you will change people's lives completely. Yes. Just with your presence of Christ in you, the hope of glory, you see. So, you know, get more of God's spirit. And, and it will attract a lot of people and that anointing that he gives you will keep them there. And you know, in 48 years of full-time preaching, I've never had a financial deficit. Amen. That a miracle of God? Amen. Not one. You know why? You think I got more faith in you? Nah, I just didn't believe for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know how many people told me, now nah, boy, somebody, yeah, you can tell that Mississippi draw. I'm going to tell you something there, boy. You're going to suffer, 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 suffer. <laughs> and we do suffer for Jesus. Don't misunderstand me. <coughs> Which means permit. Suffer the children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of God. Which means permit. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't have suffered if Christians wouldn't have make me suffer. Right. Steal my offerings. It's amazing, man. Preach Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Give you a Dr. Pepper when you leave. <laughs> I think y'all gonna see that next week on Inside the Vision. Is that right? And uh, I never said a word. Ran out of gas. I didn't know much about angels. God sent them to me though. They look like men. What's the matter with you, young man? Um, embarrassed. I ran out of gas. Well, where, where, where you were? Where you come from? I was at the church. And one of them said, uh, "Did they receive an offering for you?" I said, "Yes, sir." But they didn't give it to me. Oh, he started cussing. <laughs> he filled up my car. I hadn't eaten five days because they wouldn't feed me. And at that time, I had given all my money away. But I was so happy that God would call me. Yeah. Yes. I just fast. 
and he told me to go in that little store, it's like a 7-Eleven when I'm looking at me. So, and I got some bologna and cheese and bread. And he filled my car up and gave me, I think it was $400 or $700, cussing up a storm. I said, Lord, he's an angel. He, he got a cussing problem, but that boy is an angel. Uh, so I could say, Jesus, I, I'll never forget that long as I ever live. It brings tears to my eyes. It, it, yeah, and I drove home. You could have said I almost would have had a financial, but I didn't. Because back in them days, my budget was like $200 a month. I had the motion away back. I gave all my money away. I made a lot, made a lot of money in my life. But, yeah, but it was so disappointing to me. And I thought, well, I just want to live for Jesus. See, I wanted that light. And I want to say this and close with this. God must be glorified in the perfection of his sons and daughters. Every time Satan tried to hurt me, using Christian people to do it, God would perfect me. That's good. Let me say that point again. God must be glorified in the perfection of his sons and daughters. I mean, I've never had it easy in the ministry because when you differ it, what people don't understand, they fear and they attack. I remember when I got, remember when I booked my first meeting, the pastor of the church tried to get him to cancel it. And yet I'm the one who helped him. I'm the one that kept that church, brought people to it. Uh, actually helped him with the, with the choir that they actually bought a bus, Trina so they could go sing. I developed a band in there because they just asked me to do it because I just couldn't get over the songs they would sing. Bringing in the sheaves, <laughs> bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. I said, I got to write y'all some music. I kind of did what you did. I just start flowing in the Holy Ghost like you did. Yeah, that was great, man. I could see, I could see Keith getting into it. Pretty soon I say, he's going to turn black. Here come the blues here. And I say, yeah, Lord. <laughs> it's just good, man. It's just good. I like it. So I wrote them songs and man, had a 40 piece choir. God called me to the ministry. He tried to get me canceled. Well, they're not calling my son. I don't know why. Jealousy, envy. Yeah. You know, I was told that I would never preach a believers convention by word of faith people. Word of faith preachers, excuse me. Now, son, I was sitting one time just talking and they were all talking about the believers conventions. All I wanted to preach. I was doing an Assembly of God um, revival. And I knew a few of these people and they said, I said, well, boy, I wouldn't mind preaching one of those things myself. Oh, you'll never do that. You shallow. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Got it. You shallow. I said, okay. But I wanted to say, how come I got so many meetings and you can't get one? <laughs> how come I'm packing out churches and you ain't packing nothing? Yeah. Just packing your clothes to go to a church. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't say that, but I ain't gonna lie. I thought of it. <laughs> Boy, and I could feel that old Jesse. Let him dance with you, Jesse. <laughs> and you know what happened in this building? Those same guys were sitting right there where Richard Roberts is. And I came out and I finished preaching. They come, they said, now, brother Jesse, stay humble. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Stay humble. Said, I thought it was. They're not here anymore. Why? Light went dim. Yeah. I'm not being critical, just being truthful here. Yeah. So I've learned something about judging through a conversation with God Almighty. I was reading the scripture and I believe in judging what Brother Colton was saying. I believe that. That's 100% right. But then I noticed one time that Jesus said something that blew me away. He said, beware of the Pharisees. He said, he, they're right in front of me. You're a snake. You're a hypocrite. You're a viper. I thought, Jesus, uh, you're kind of judging him, people, aren't you? He said, no, I'm telling the truth. He said, I'm not being critical. I'm being truthful. He said, if it's the truth, you can say anything at any time because the truth sets you free. Wasn't being, Jesus wasn't being critical. He was being truthful. 
and I realized what God was saying there. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I, I've really studied the life of Christ a lot. And I love the Apostle Paul, but I love switching over to Jesus because you can't find a flaw in him. You can find flaws in the Apostle Paul. And I'm so glad that God actually recorded their, their, their problems as well as their answers, their flaws as well as their goodness. I mean, Abraham lied. That doesn't mean you lie. But God showed us that, that Isaac and Rebecca didn't have a good marriage. That they loved their boys differently. It showed that Moses, kill a guy, and then strikes the rock. But then he also says that he stood in the presence of God 40 days. My God, man. Yeah. I'm glad. And I said, God, why'd you do that? To make you realize that they walk through life just like you do. Yeah. Yeah. But then I followed Jesus looking for something wrong and never found it. Always teaching, 12 years old. I'm about my father's business talking to them crazy people in the temple. <laughs> telling them how to run it financially. Mm-hmm. If you don't run your ministry like a business, you're awaiting bankruptcy. Yeah. I don't care how anointed you are. Yeah. Oh, you want some examples? 1947, 1958, but the only one that lasted was old Roberts. Yeah. Where are the A.A. Allens and the Jack Coles? Where are they? William Branham's. I'm talking about great men of God. I'm talking flat. <laughs> Anointed. Not a lot of business sense. That's what's wrong with most of the church today. Preachers are good preachers, but not good business people. You have to learn to mix them too. See, when you understand business and, and the anointing, you got a vision now. You don't know how to work that seat when you understand that. So that's what I'm talking about today. It, 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 you know, it's to let your light so shine. So I had some people say, you need to come preach to my church. I said, no, I need to preach to you. Because you're the problem. Because you don't have any business sense whatsoever at all. Now you need to learn something. And said, don't try to be the smartest man in the room. See, when I hire people, I hire people to my weaknesses, not to my strengths. I mean, he, I know how to do something, so I just do it. So I want to get somebody around me to show me something that I don't know how to do. Yeah, the buck stops at my desk. Don't misunderstand me. I understand that. You know, you, you got to be ahead of something. And I never thought in my entire life that my ministry would be big enough that I don't know everything is going on. But that's happening because I have directors. I have a CEO sitting over there uh, that does all that. She meets with the director and they look at the ministry and do all the different things and stuff like that. They all have certain limits of money that they can spend before it comes to me. In fact, I went one time to Kathy's, one of her directed me, boy, and they're talking about all that kind of stuff. And I said, Kathy, how come I don't know that? You know what she said? That's below your pay grade. I said, you know, that makes sense. That's what I hired y'all for. Then they set up a meeting to come to me. But I didn't know that. I walk in there and now they talking about spending a million here and a million there and a million here. And I'm listening. I said, Kathy, excuse me, that's above your pay grade. That don't go to you. That comes to me. She's not my wife from nine to five. I know that's shocking. She's not my wife from nine to five. She's my employee. I'll say it in front of her and they all know that. Because if we brought this ministry home, we'd be fighting all the time. This is business. She said, we were coming in to present to you. I said, y'all will set me up. (laughs) No, but you know how she sets me up? Jody, (laughs) my daughter. 52 years old, and I've never told her no. And she didn't know when the crack of the door was open in my office. And I heard Kathy say, go tell your daddy to do this. <laughs> go tell your daddy. He, he ain't listening to me or anybody, but he will listen to you. <laughs> She's 52 years old. I've never told her no. Everything she says makes sense to me. And I looked at her. I said, Jody, your mama sent you in here. She said, that's right, Dad. But now I'm asking you. (laughs) 
And I'm going to say something you may not believe. There's some time God wanted me to do something I didn't want to do. So Jesus talked to me instead of the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'm asking you. <laughs> okay. So we did it. Now I know what they do. But now Meredith is the same way. 16 year old girl. My God. I never told her no. Now Jody's saying, Dad, you never tell Meredith no. I said, well, everything she says makes sense to me. <laughs> I said, all of y'all have to, I had to sit them down one time. Kathy, Jody, Meredith, my son-in-law, Jay. I said, listen, all of y'all, before all y'all were born, I was driving my tricycle three years. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm a man of my word. I close with this. I told Meredith, when you get 16 years old, I'll buy you any kind of car you want. Whatever you want, Meredith. Well, I had a friend of mine in Oklahoma City. I love him, man. He said, Jesse, did you tell your granddaughter you'd buy any kind of vehicle? I said, yeah. He said, well, suppose she wants a Ferrari. I said, she'll get it. Kathy said, you ain't buying that girl a Ferrari. What time is it, Kathy? It's 1030. You're not my wife. Oh, I'm shocking y'all. Y'all think I'm in trouble. No, she's used to that. No, no, this is business. This is business. My words, my bond, that's business. Now she understands. So we asked her, I said, what kind of car you want? She said, Grandpa, I'd like to have a Jeep. I thought, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I said, a lot cheaper than a uh, Ferrari. <laughs> well, Kathy said, well, you know, I said, Meredith, you, you a girly girl. Jeeps are rough riding. They look cool, but they're rough riding. I know you. So we got to looking around, and Jody drives a Range Rover, Land Rover, whatever you call those things, a, a Defender. Well, she's had so many of them, I don't know, a bunch of them. Well, Mary decided to go down there, and, and I just, I went to the car dealership too, Richard. I just, I, all I did was sit down. They sent me to pay for everything. I, that's all I do. I stay in my lane. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there, you know. And they looked at seven or different vehicles. And she landed on one of these Defender, beautiful. Terry, you ought to see that. That's a fine vehicle, you know. And she says, Grandfather, I like this one. I said, it's yours. I said, Kathy, write the check. <laughs> she said, okay. Come back out, they give her the key. I said, how much was the check? $95,000. I said, it's a safe car, isn't it? I said, does it cost that much money to be safe? Because it's a very strong vehicle. I said, yeah, I'm not bragging about that. I told her she could have anything. It's a lot cheaper than a Ferrari. <laughs> and I looked at her, she said, well, grandfather, everything you say you do. I said, I gotta let my light shine that God would be glorified. I'm not looking for anything. God would be glorified. And you know, I had one of the most proudest moments of my life. The school teacher asked them to write about their favorite hero. I didn't know nothing about that. I don't know what Meredith does in school and all that kind of stuff. And I never knew hardly anything what Jody did in school because Kathy raised Jody, I traveled. The only thing I ever did in Jody, all our elementary, was I made it to her graduation barely. I come running in before they gave her her diploma, you know, the caps go flying up and all that kind of stuff. And she, I, she said, she wrote about me. Mary said, he's my hero. Not because he gives me things. He just does what he says. And I thought about God and my relationship. You're my hero. And you know why? Because you do what you say. You do what you say. 
And you come too late to tell me that doesn't work. Because he does what he says. So I said, Lord, turn up the voltage on me. Yeah. Let me shine brighter. You're going to put me in some rock and hard places sometimes. Like with some of this stuff that's happening with perilous times. I don't like people lying to me. Just tell me the truth. I'll work it out. I won't hate you. That's not the issue. I love my country, but I'm, uh, I don't trust my government. I don't like to spend. Just tell me. Then let me make up my mind at that ballot box. I won't tell you who to vote for. That's not my job. My job is to tell you, go seek the Lord. Let God tell you where to go. And I'll give you a little business. Look at the platform. Then go back and check the track record. Then go back to the throne of God and say, which button should I push? I'll never forget one time I went and voted in an election and they didn't have the curtains. I don't know, not a kind of way. You just kind of stand like getting it. And I'm, they had some amendments they wanted to do and I'm just reading it. The lady said, you're kind of taking time. And I said, well, I'm waiting for God to tell me which button to push. She goes, excuse me. <laughs> and then he said, that one. That's pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, it's up to us to pray for our leaders that we live a peaceful, gentle, quiet life. Yeah. I pray for President Biden every day. I pray for Kamala every day. I pray for our president, vice president, our military, that they all be born again. Our Congress, I say president, vice president, Congress, military. And God, if they refuse to accept your offer of salvation, then replace them and put the righteous in authority. That's what I pray. Because they have a choice to accept Jesus and a choice not to. See what I'm saying? So, and then I said, I leave. People say, well, who are you voting for? I ain't telling you that. If you don't think me and Kathy, we're so totally different. She's a Republican and I'm an independent. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm changing my affiliation. I don't hate Republicans. I don't hate Democrats because they are Americans. I kind of think of them like Good Catholics and bad Catholics. <laughs> Good Catholics go to Mass every week. Bad Catholics go Easter and Christmas. Yeah. So when you see one for Easter, you might as well say Merry Christmas because that's the next time you're going to see it. <laughs> or if you go see Christmas, hey, Happy Easter because that's the next time you're going to see it. We call it bad Catholics. Yeah, anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then the good Catholics, they go to Mass every Sunday or Saturday. Just that simple. Did you enjoy it this morning? Yes. Ooh, Lord. Would you stand to your feet, please?